Hi, my name's Jenny List. I spend a lot of time writing about other people's stuff, but I don't spend much time writing about my own stuff. So here we are again for another exciting installment of What's on Jenny's Bench. Last episode, I showed you my Raspberry Pi based digital Super 8 cartridge. I realized that I forgot to show you some footage filmed with it to show you just what's wrong with it. Um, I have a bit of footage to show you, which makes it very obvious why this has still got a problem. But also, I didn't show you another prototype I made. As well as uh, a cartridge based on the Raspberry Pi, I also made one based on the ASP32, which I'll probably return to in due course. It's just easier to develop with the Raspberry Pi. Anyway, without further ado, let's uh, move on to the subject of today's video. To test my Raspberry Pi Zero based uh, Super 8 digital cartridge, I took my Minolta XL250 test camera and I put it on a mini tripod about a metre away from a little still life I created. There's a big stuffed tux, tux, tux the Linux penguin plushie and he's got his arm round a bottle of Club Marta. Look at the video. Um, it starts off very out of focus. This is in wide angle. Um, it doesn't matter really where the focus ring is because you can't see much. Uh, it's only when you start to zoom in uh, to sort of telephoto that uh, you can focus in on the, the tux and the Club Marta bottle. It's a bit uh, washed out. That's really because of the aperture setting. I'm using a manual aperture. But as you can see, there is a problem with the focus. This is down to the position of the sensor relative to the lens. And it's very clear that I need to make some adjustments. I hope that makes that clear anyway. Last time I went into quite a lot of detail about my digital Super 8 cartridge based around a Raspberry Pi Zero. It's a very straightforward cartridge to work with because the Raspberry Pi has a very accessible software stack. But um, as I told you, uh, my approach of mounting the camera sensor directly where the film would go still has some problems with the video. Uh, you'll have seen the footage, you'll know what I mean. Uh, it's something I can fix. I can probably improve its position in the focal plane and turn this into a much more useful cartridge. What I didn't show you was the other cartridge that I made along the way. Now this is a very, very similar idea, but instead of a Raspberry Pi, it has a little ESP32 board. I think this is an AI Thinker ESP32 board. And on the back of it at the moment, I've got a little programming board. Uh, it's got some, some headers there with some GPIOs and a serial port. This is the little programming board. Exactly the same idea as a Raspberry Pi. I have a flexible PCB going to a camera module. Yet again, it was a camera module with uh, a little, tiny little spy lens on the front, which I was able to carefully remove with, with the edge of a scalpel. And yet again, it's mounted on a movable uh, sensor carrier. The idea was I could mount it, move it forward and backwards to mount it directly exactly where it should be. And the idea is that just like before, it just make sure that's back, it just clicks directly into the camera like that and just works as a um as, as though it were a Super 8 cartridge. It has exactly the same problem as the other one. Uh it's been difficult to get the uh, sensor exactly in the right place relative to the film. Yet again, I think I can fix this and I think I will get this working. It's interesting because it gives me two options. Uh, the Raspberry Pi has much easier software to deal with. It's more or less off the shelf, the software I can talk to in Python. Lib, lib, lib camera is a very easy way to work with a camera module. Whereas this one requires a little bit more work. I've been programming using the Arduino um, ecosystem, the Arduino IDE, and it's very doable, but the software is less easy. There's, there's less processor cycles and you've got to do more work to save things. Right now, I've just got it st streaming to a web page, which to be honest is not much more than the example code with a few of my additions. Uh, and I'm sure I could with a bit of work do better. Um, 
for now, it's easier for me to develop using the Raspberry Pi simply because it's uh, easy to deal with. But I thought I'd show you this other option because it does have the advantage that uh, while Raspberry Pis can be quite difficult to get hold of at the moment, uh, I think that is a, a Pi Zero 3, the, sorry, Zero 2 rather, it's basically the Raspberry Pi 3 chip on a Zero foot, footprint. Um, Raspberry Pis can be quite difficult to get hold of, whereas these things are relatively cheap and very easy to get hold of. So um, if I solve the position, the problem with the position of the sensor, then it's quite possible that I will return to this ESP32 version and try and make a more accessible camera module. Anyway, certainly worth showing you just so that you know what work I've done. This has been quite a short episode, mainly because uh, I'm doing a bit of traveling. I'm going back to my university to speak to some students about my career. And so I haven't got so much time. Also, it's the end of the month for Hackaday writing. And uh, like all journalists, occasionally I have to work for a deadline. So uh, I just haven't had much time to put into this. But anyway, here's what I have to show you. Thanks very much. I don't have a sponsor for my videos. But as before, I'd like to take this moment to talk about something else I'm involved with away from my career writing about tech. I am a board member of a small non-profit called Trans Rescue. We get trans people like me out of dodgy and dangerous places around the world. I'd like you to go to our website, read our blog and see what we're up to. And if you can, help us in our work. Thanks very much and thank you for watching this video.